I'm Wendy Rabbage. Part of what we want to cover is some of those um, frequently asked questions that, that people have about the red zone settlement process and also the process that um, needs to be followed in terms of taking somebody through from getting their letter to say that they're actually confirmed into the red zone and settling their property with the Crown. This situation is definitely unique. Um, it's the first time in New Zealand that we've had anything of this size and also too a lot of the policy and process that's been required to support this has needed to be developed as we're going through which makes it a, an extremely complex situation for people to actually understand as they're working through. There are over six and a half thousand properties in terms of size of this um, of the process that we're trying to manage. That's part of the challenge that, that we've had in Sarah in terms of, of what we've needed to manage. The process definitely requires a high level of involvement from all of the agencies involved, as you'll see as part of the process. Um, lawyers, EQC and private insurers all have to use a single system in terms, to, in terms of making sure that this happens in the, in the smoothest way possible for those affected residents. So once people have received their letter confirming that they're in the red zone, it has a consent form in it that they need to complete. That consent form asks for certain information. It asks them to confirm the property details for the affected property. It asks them for their contact, new contact details to make sure that we can get all of the information out to them that we need in the shortest possible time. It also asks for the signatures of all legal owners. Now part of the reason for the consent form is that if we don't have a consent form, we can't ask EQC and private insurers to share the, their information or add their information to the system. So one, that's really critical in terms of getting um, that process going. The consent form comes into SERA, and SERA provide that consent form to, to the Crown Settlement Agent for them to enter the, the information into the database. Now, if that information's incorrect, they'll go back to the property owner and confirm that information for them. Once the information's been added into the database, that sends a, a trigger into EQC and the private insurer for them to actually go in and start their part of the process. That will also generate an offer letter to the, to the individual as a property owner and they will then have the opportunity to think about which option they would like to select, if at all and they take that through to their lawyer. The key things that you will need to take to your lawyer are your policy details, the details of any claims that you have with both EQC and your private insurer, and anything else that may be different. So for example, if, you, if you're in a trust and your insurance details are different to those of, your, of the legal owners of the property, you'll need to take that verification to your lawyer as well. All of that helps speed up the settlement process and make it go as smoothly as possible. Once that information has been provided by your lawyer, you will then be able to select an option. So there are two options that you can select. In terms of the difference between the two options, the key thing to remember that in both options, the Crown is buying both your land and your buildings. In option one, the Crown is taking over your insurance um, claims for both your land and your buildings. In option two, the Crown is, Crown is only taking over your claim for your land only, and, and you as a property owner will continue to negotiate the settlement for your buildings with your private insurer. In option one, the Crown takes over your claims on both your land and your buildings. EQC and your private insurer have to confirm the details that your, your lawyer has actually entered into the system. So your lawyer will enter all the payments that you've received from EQC and your private insurer, and EQC and the private insurer will then go and confirm those details into the system. That will generally mean that if you've received an overcap payment, that EQC will then go in and they will confirm that that's correct. If all of the figures balance, then you can go through and your lawyer will be able to select a, a settlement date. In option two, the um, Crown is still buying both your land and your buildings. The only difference with option two is that as a property owner, you will continue to negotiate for your buildings with your private insurer. 
Once you've selected a settlement date, your lawyer will work with you to get the sale and purchase agreement signed. This will have all the information that you've provided that is needed to complete the sale and purchase of your property to the Crown. This goes through to the Crown Settlement Agent and they work with the Crown Conveyancer who engages with your lawyer to complete the process. You do not need to worry too much at this stage. Everything will be taken care of between your lawyer and the Crown Conveyancer. The key thing is that you must be organised to vacate your property on the date that you have agreed to settle. In terms of timeframes, there's a range of timeframes. Once you've received your letter confirming that you're in the red zone, you have, there is no time frame for you to return the consent form. The final date for you to settle is the 30th of April 2013. If you have a settlement date that is out beyond six weeks, you can actually choose to get a deposit. And the final date that, that for settlement is April 2013. The key point about reviewing the purchase price is the purchase price is based on the rateable valuation, but the only time that, that a person should be reviewing their purchase price is where they think that the floor area of their property may be incorrect. If you do think you, you need to review the purchase price, just be aware that there is a cost and it will take some time. The way that it's done is your lawyer will actually do that through the um, settlements database and it will follow the course that it needs to follow. There are times when people might want to consider special case consideration. I think the key thing to note here is that it doesn't speed up the process. No matter how long it's going to take, you still follow the same steps in the process. The key thing that the special case consideration request will, will do is it will, it will provide a level of monitoring to make sure that any of the roadblocks that are in place are actually navigated through in the shortest possible way. The only time that you would really need a fast track or special case consideration request is if you're wanting a settlement that's re really quick, um, where it's likely to be less than, than four weeks. A lot of people have asked us where, whether they can take their chattels, fixtures and fittings with them. Now, there is some confusion around the difference between a chattel and a fixture and fitting. A chattel is something that's not fixed down, a fixture and fitting is something that's permanently fixed. With chattels you don't have to worry, you can take those. With fixtures and fittings you would need to have a conversation with either Sarah if you've chosen option one or with your private insurer if you've chosen option two to determine whether you can take the fixtures and fittings that you're looking at with you. They will negotiate that with you and the key thing to note is that all of those fixtures and fittings will need to be uh, uh, gone from the property when you settle. I think the key places to go for more information is make sure that you're talking with your lawyer, make sure that you've got everything covered off with your private insurer and EQC, that you're talking to them regularly, and if you want more help, you can ring Sarah on 0800 ring Sarah.